So let us look at the formalization of a PDA. I invite you to open the textbook on definition 2.13 and you will see the, that a PDA is a bit more involved than an um, NFA. So it still has a set of finite set of states. It still has a finite set of inputs, but now it has a new thing, which is the alphabet of the stack. And this is saying that they don't have to be the same. You can have a, a in fact, you can even have a, a stack that has a completely different um, alphabet than the one that is in the input. So this is something to note. Um, then you have your transition function, which we'll see with the example will be easier to understand. And you also have a initial state as before and a final state as, as before. So let's look uh, at the transition function by means of examples. So if I wanted to specify this automaton formally, what are my states? My states are qinit, qa, qb, and qf, which are written here. So it's this set. What is the alphabet of the input? Let's see. I read a's and I read b's. That's the only thing I do. So I read a's and b's. And what is the alphabet of my, of my um, stack? Well, it's the dollar sign, which I'm using for the sentinel. And then it's a's nothing else so it's a and dollar sign so this would be the third element would be this set thirdly we have the transition function which is just a function that represents these edges so how do i write it i write it in the following way i give the input is what is the state and then what is the um, the input Right? So what am I reading? And then what am I popping is also part of the input. So epsilon here. And what do you do? You have to return all the outgoing states. So what that means is if you are popping an element, you can only go to a given state. You cannot do epsilon, epsilon, um, and go to another state. Right? So from this state, if you read epsilon, you can only go to one state. Sorry, you can go to two states because this is a set. Um, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> uh, this is a set. That's actually, that's the main difference with the DFA, right? With the DFA, you only have one outgoing. But with the PDA, what <laughs> should be saying is that you can, in fact, have multiple ones, which is what makes sense. Um, what else? So this set, so this transition, what do I say? I say that it has an input uh, Q in it, and then an epsilon, and it reads and it pops an epsilon. And then what are my outputs? The output is the dollar sign and QA. So with the dollar sign, I go to QA. That's one way of thinking. So that's what you're returning. This pairs. Each pair is going to be. Um, what you pop and which state you're going to. So here the inputs would be QA, A and Epsilon and the output would be A and QA, right? which is this. Input would be QA, Epsilon and Epsilon. Output would be QB and Epsilon. Input would be QB, B and A. Output would be QB and Epsilon. Finally, from here, QB is the input, Epsilon is the input, dollar sign is the input. Output would be Epsilon and QF. Oh, this should be an F. Otherwise, you just return the empty set. And that's how you would specify formally this, um, this uh, automaton.